Well, during the FISMAS fall, many of the lecturers at that stage were on SharePoint and they, a lot of them had to migrate to Moodle to try and bring about some of the assessments that they needed to do to try and complete the academic year. Um, and what we found was many of the lecturers, without having any prior experience with Moodle, tried to make their sites um, very creative, very beautiful, put in links, put in videos, put in numerous things to try and make it um, very rich in terms of the content available. But unfortunately what that led to is many students spending 50 to 100 Rand just getting onto the site because of the numerous uh, links and embedded content that was on the Moodle site. And that left many of our students struggling to even provide or get on to do the assessments in the first place. And then they would email us and say, please help us, what must we do? So when I became aware of that, it was very much a drive which started out in the department. Um, just trying to inform all the different staff, listen, this is great what you're doing and completely perfect. However, there are certain things that we've got to look at. For example, the students' availability to funds and they're already having to try to go to different municipalities at that time, um, the libraries that were open to them and the computers weren't working. So one of the things that I suggested, let's try and make it as plain and simple as possible, remove all the lovely um, pictures, remove all the embedded links and just have the assessments that you need, possibly the slides, um, all those different kind of things, but it's a choice so that when they get to a Wi-Fi zone, they can download it, save it to their phone and it's on. Um, so just removing the stuff that has to be downloaded before they even get to the assessment. What's nice with Moodle is they actually have activity trackers. So we can actually see who goes on when, what do they download, what are they using? And maybe for a large part of the time is it's a lot of different activities that are linked to the very learning that they're doing. So they're going to be learning for a test and then they can go on and they can, you can see them downloading slides, downloading, okay, so that you can see in that. But what we have found or what I have found since definitely Fees Must Fall is there's been a, uh, an appreciation for there being more resources available um, but there's also been a need to um, understand that the time frames that we give to do it need to be pushed out a little bit. So maybe we gave one or two days at the beginning, but there wasn't enough devices. So we've had to adapt to it and say, okay, fine, let's go and do over a week. So from one study unit to the next and give a greater time span for more students to have access to the PCs. Um, also, what we've realized is if you make use of Moodle in terms of quizzes, all right, and some of the staff members have started to incorporate these quizzes into their actual modules um, DP, the way it's calculated. They've gone and added a weighting to it. All right. Now, what that's gone and done is then certain things like quizzes are for an individual. Now, you've also have to have a look at what happens if the power goes off if, if you only set it for one day. So it's been very much of you give an expanded time frame. You also give passwords to make sure that the person who's got the password can access it and it's just them. Um, but also, if there's something does go wrong, you deal with individual cases on that. Um, so it's definitely been a learning experience for them. I think for me it was very much a personal um, philosophy. I was somebody even growing up when I was even at school that didn't learn like everybody else learned. I learned through using visual yes, being in class, writing notes, but I was different. I actually go through numerous examples of different things and for me that underlines what I now and how I teach today. So for me there's <laughs> a definite drive to provide as many avenues as possible through blended learning, um, through making use of technology, to try and facilitate students' learning through multiple avenues, right? Not just having me in the front there talking, that's great, but I'm trying to make sure that not only one style is accommodated. And for me that's critical because we have so many students. In my first year class at the moment we have close to a thousand students. Um, and the reality is there's mass education. How do I then go and have a personal contact with each of them? And it's very difficult. So what I try to do is try to facilitate their learning by providing the different resources, different ways for them and trying to make contact, contact with them through blended learning. 
Blended learning to me has become at the heart of what I do because for me it's available to the student 24 hours a day when I'm not there. And for me that's critical in their learning. Um, they can go home for the holidays and they've got it. Um, it's different for um, different students, maybe they do have access, maybe they don't. But for me, it's critical that you try and cover as many students as possible, um, particularly because of the numbers.